Hey Magic friends, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. We've got another glorious day of leaks from Dominaria United and we got some spicy ones, I ain't gonna lie. We're 176 cards in, over 100 cards still left to spoil. Uh, it looks like most of them are gonna be commons, but we still got some juicy ones coming out. We've got two more days of spoilers left at least. So, it's going to be a good time. So, before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe as we're trying to get to 1,000 patrons. So, let's hit it. So, we're going to start the day off with Sprouting Goblin. So, for a red and one, you get a 2-2 Goblin. When it enters the battlefield, if you kick it, you get to search your library for a land card with a basic land type. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Uh, so, you get to kick it for a one green. So... For three mana, you get a 2-2 two -two and a land search, which is amazing. And for a red and tap, tap, a red and tap, sacrifice a land, draw a card. This seems like a powerhouse of a red card. It's gonna, it looks like it's going to be good for standard, uh, all kinds of formats, maybe even modern or, or legacy with this special ability. Uh, maybe not, but man, in standard, it seems like this Goblin Drew is just going to be house. So, moving on, next we have... King Durin, the 572nd, or whatever that word, whatever letter that is. Uh, white, green, and one for a two, three. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Let me say that again. Other creatures you control. It is a super lord. And for a white, green, and three, play plus one, plus one counter on King Durin and create a one, one white soldier creature token. Uh, you sacrifice the king. Uh, creature tokens you control gain hexproof and indestructible to end of turn. This looks like a powerhouse card, not only for standard but also for commander. Um, maybe even pioneer. I don't think it's gonna go too further back than that because three mana for just a two three that pumps doesn't seem good enough. But could be wrong, especially in a human deck. It is a human. All right, so next we have. Danitha Benalia's Hope. So for a white and four, you get a 4-4 four, four First Strike Vigilance Life-Linking Creature. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may put an aura or equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto it. Uh, this looks like it could be a powerhouse in standard. Uh, just because at the late end of a game, uh, especially limited, being able to drop this and get the, let's say, best or of equipment out of your graveyard or from your hand put straight into play seems amazing uh don't forget you know for five mana you could put this in play and throw a battle skull batter skull on the table for all you commander players or, or god knows anything else um you could put a sword on it because it says attach so you get to attach the equipment this this card has lots of possibilities i think it's gonna be pretty good I think it's going to be pretty cheap when it first comes out until people realize how sweet it is. We have Silver Scrutiny. Two blue and X, you may cast it as a... You may cast it as only that flash if X is three or less. So for five mana, you can draw three cards as an instant. Or as a sorcery, you can just draw a buttload of cards. So this is probably going to be another good card. It goes into, goes into certain commander decks. Uh, I don't know if it's going to see a whole lot of play in standard... We we'll have to see how the world shapes it around. I uh, might see some pioneer playing some weird combo decks of infinite mana, uh, just so you can draw your whole deck. But who knows? Next we have Drag Below. So two black and two is a sorcery has domain. Uh, each creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is one plus the number of basic land types among lands you control. Um, this seems awful. It's not a wrath. It's a worst minus one, minus one. I mean, it can give you minus three, minus three for four, but you can also get minus two, minus two for three. Like, I just don't think this is going to be good enough, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on. Next, we have Ivy, the Gleeful Spell Thief. So for a blue-green, you get a 2-1 flyer, which is already pretty sweet. Whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy... Uh, you may copy that spell. Uh, the copy then targets Ivy. Very interesting. Um, so notice on there it says a copy of an aura spell becomes a token. Uh, 
So I think as a rare, this is going to be pretty good because you can start putting extra auras on things. Uh, there's already a red, green, white version of a enchantment deck, which this might play well in if you take maybe the red out. But I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I think this card is pretty sweet. Next, we have the Gin of the Fountain. So for two blue and four, you get a 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you can uh, give this thing a plus one, plus one to enter turn. Exile Gin of the Fountain, return to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next instep, or scry one. Very interesting. Kind of a blue win condition that can protect itself. So I still don't think it's going to see a lot of play, but it would be good in draft. All right, we have Yoda Declares War. Not Yoda. Yota. Anyway, red and one. It has a read ahead. Uh, for one, you can create an O2 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying named Ornithopter. So basically, you create an Ornithopter. Uh, for two, tap any number of untapped artifacts you control. When you do, uh, this card deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker. That's not too shabby. And three, up to one target artifact you control becomes a creature with base power and toughness 4 4 till end of turn. Um. Not too bad. Probably going to go very well with uh, the Mirror Breaker uh, saga. Not going to lie. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But as an uncommon, I think it will see play. So moving on. Next, we have Gaia's Might. So for one green, you have an instant. It has domain. Target creature gets plus one, plus one. Until end of turn, for each basic land type uh, you have among the lands you control. So at best, for one mana, you get a 5-5+. Five, five um, eh. It's going to be okay. It's going to be decent for a draft. Probably won't see a whole lot of play past that, to be honest. Next, we have Anointed Peacekeeper. So this bad boy here. A white and two for a human cleric with vigilance and it's 3-3. Three, three. When a peacekeeper enters the battlefield, you look at opponent's hands, then choose any card name. Spells your opponent's cast with the chosen name cost two more to cast. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name cost two more to activate. So... This is good not only in what's going to be the new standard uh, and probably other formats, but also amazing in Commander. Because notice it says, spells your opponents. So if you peace keep somebody and everybody's playing the same cards, like let's say Brainstorm, you can name Brainstorm and now all the Brainstorms your opponents cast cost, cost more. Um, I think this is great for a three mana card. I think it's easily a $5 card. Um, but we'll have to wait and see if it picks up any steam, but a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance for 3 seems pretty good. Next, we have the Hurloon Battle Hymn. So for a red and 2, you have an instant. Kicks for a white. Uh, it deals 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker. If you kicked it, you gain 4 life. So not too bad for a 3-mana instant. Um, it probably will see some standard play. Just cost for 3-mana. It does deal 4. You can gain life. Uh, definitely going to be a draft, all, draft and limited all-star. Next, we have Cleaving Skyrider, a white and two for a 2-2 flash guy with flying. It can kick for a red and two. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of attacking creatures. So that's very interesting. So if I'm reading this right, if your opponent attacks, you can flash him in and it still works. Because when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of attacking creatures. Yeah, uh, this seems pretty sweet. However, for six mana, you're probably asking for a lot for it to see play. But probably pretty good and limited. Battlewing Mystic. So for a blue and one, you get a 2-1 bird wizard that flies, kicks for a red. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you get to discard your hand and draw two cards. This seems really good for draft because if you got an empty hand, you just discard your hand, which is nothing, and then draw two for three mana plus you get a two one. This may find a home in some blue decks in standard because uh, for three mana, this is a pretty good effect for blue. I'm not going to lie. I like this. Next, we have Quirion Beast Caller. So a green and one for a two two. It's Dryad Warrior. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, when it dies, you get to distribute all the plus one plus one counters. Among any number of target creatures you control, where X is the number of counters already on it. So, very interesting. You get to save your counters if it dies. That's probably going to be um, a definite auto-include in all those mono green decks. 
Next we have Rona Shields Faithful. So for a blue, I'm sorry, a black, black, a blue, and one, you get a three, four. Legendary creature, human wizard. Whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses one life. Each opponent, commander. Anyway, you may cast Rona uh, Shields Faithful from your graveyard by discarding two cards in addition to paying other costs. Um, very interesting. Uh, it doesn't really go away. Uh, it has cool ability. Um, I don't know if it's good enough for standard. I mean, probably good enough for um, for commander because maybe you want to discard cards, you know, for whatever reason. So, yeah, this might actually see some play. Next, we have Joda's Codex. So, five mana artifact, domain five. So, you tap it to draw a card. You have to pay five to tap it, but it costs one less for one less to activate for each basic land type. So you have one of every land type. This thing just says tap, draw a card. If shock lands and things like that were in, this thing would be nuts. This is already going to be good enough in the standard just because uh, of the triomes. You know, two or three triomes and a couple ba or two triomes and a couple basics can get you to five. Uh, I think people are going to try to get this pulled off. Commander definite auto include. So we'll have to wait and see how good it really is, but I think this is going to be a pretty sweet card. Next we have the Defiler of Flesh. So two black and two for a 4-4 four, four menace. Uh, this is the black cycle where all your black spells, you can pay two, you can play Phyrexian mana, which is pay two life instead of one black. Uh, whenever you cast a black permanent spell, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains menace till the end of turn. Uh, probably not one of the best abilities, but a 4-4 four, four four, four menace for four that gives you this ability is, not going to lie, pretty sweet. Standard, limited, you name it. All right, Juniper Order Root Weaver. So white and one for a 2-2. Two, two. It kicks for a green. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it's kicked, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So for three mana, it could be a 3-3. Three, three, or something else could be decent common. Could be great in draft and limited. Next, we have Jaya's Fire, Fire, Fire Nado. <laughs> for red and four. Deals 5 damage to our creature. Planeswalker, Scry 1. Uh, definitely a limited all-star at best. All right, Haughty Jin. That's right. So for 2 blue and 1, you get a Jin. It flies. Uh, its power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Instant and sorcery spells also cost 1 less to cast. And it's a blank 4. Uh, this is going to see some serious play in red-blue. Um, just the fact that it makes everything cheaper to cast is just nuts um i mean this, this almost could be a one of in a storm deck if it just wasn't three mana like because instant sorceries cost one less right it's big enough to actually be a win or a kill condition because you put a bunch of instant sorceries in your graveyard like this 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 could make a lot of headways in a lot of different ways we'll have to wait and see how it goes uh so i keep your eye on this one definitely a limited all-star and probably a little bit in standard Next, we have the Phyrexian Espionage, uh, a blue and two, kicker, black and one. So this is basically a draw two spell that if you kick, the opponent discards a card. So basically it's two cards in one, depending on how you want to cast it. Next, we have Sten, Paranoid Partisan. So for a blue and white, Legendary Human Wizard, uh, he enters the battlefield, choose a card type other than creature or land. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. For a blue, white, and one, you can exile Sten, then return to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Uh, someone's already talking about there might be a combo with this to win on turn one. Ugh, I hope not. But, with that said, this is a pretty sweet card, especially for white-blue. Um, I mean, this could be good enough to be if it wasn't the fact that it's white, it would be really good inside a uh, storm-style deck or something like that. But it's blue-white. Um, not that you can't splash white into the older formats, but I think this card's gonna see a lot more play in older formats than newer ones because it's legendary for one. But we'll have to wait and see. So, but keep your eye on it, guys. I think there's gonna be shenanigans to put. Next, we have Runic Shot. So for one white, you can destroy target tap creature. And if you pay a blue when you kick it, you get to scry two. This is probably going to be one of the draft all-star removal spells, regardless if you play blue or not, because for one white, starting a tap creature is a thing. And if you happen to have a blue source so you can scry two, 
That's almost like drawing a card. That is insanely good. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a draft all-star, but probably won't go any further than that, sadly enough. All right, moving on. Next we have, look at this Sarah Paragon. Two white and two for a 3-4 flyer. Once during each of your turns, you may play a land from your graveyard or cast a permanent spell with mana value three or less from your graveyard. If you do, it gains. When this permanent is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you exile it and gain two life. This thing is nuts. I mean, this... The, the enchantment deck, which is already white, green, and red... That has all those enchantments that they just stack on creatures, and if the creature dies, all the enchantments go to the graveyard. Makes this a very playable kill card to get those enchantments back, to draw cards again, to do things again. Um, I think there's gonna be lots of shenanigans with this card, and I think this card is easily a twenty to thirty dollar card, and nobody knows it yet, except for me and you. If you happen to be watching this, if you stayed this long, at the end of the video, unfortunately, probably not. But anyway. So, with that said, guys, that's the powerhouse end to this spoiler leak. So, thanks a lot for watching. I do appreciate it. And as always, remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, comments down below. It's going to feed that YouTube algorithm. I would appreciate anything you can do for me. Looking to try to get to 1,000 subscribers. One click on the subscribe button doesn't mean a lot to you. It means a lot to the channel, and I appreciate it. For those of you who are already supporting the channel by subscribing, Check out the links in the description to the eBay store for sweet, cool cards and stuff. Sign up on Patreon for a monthly subscription for cool, free swag and card drawings, auctions, and deals on product. Also, there's an email in there if you want to reach out and say, hey, hey. And until next time, be kind. And I hope to see you across from the game table.